Here's what's new in SOLIDWORKS Simulation 2026. SOLIDWORKS Simulation 2026 brings us new exciting enhancements for your simulation needs. Today we'll be looking at all the new enhancements using the rear support structure on a horizontal driller. First up is the new option to include shell edges when using the remote load mass tool. A remote load is a good way to apply a load from a hydraulic cylinder. Up until now, it's been restricted in where you could be applied. In SOLIDWORKS Simulation 2026, remote loads and remote masses can now be applied directly to shell edges when you're using the Define Shell by Selected Faces option. For engineers analyzing sheet metal or thin plate structures, it makes it much easier to replicate real-world loading conditions. Next up is the improved simulation feedback when applying materials to your analysis. In previous years when setting up your analysis, if you forgot to add material to a body in a large assembly, the analysis would error out and not communicate what body did not have material assigned to it. New in 2026, the user experience has been improved to give more feedback for simulation errors. The error message for missing materials and mesh failure now specifies the body or bodies missing a material definition or failing to mesh. This speeds up the study creation because you no longer have to search through the simulation tree to find the issues. Next up is the ability to create angular rotation plots when post-processing your analysis results. In previous releases of SOLIDWORKS Simulation, you were not able to create an angular rotation plot with respect to degrees or radians. New in SOLIDWORKS Simulation 2026, angular rotations can now be plotted as radians or degrees. This plot type is available in studies containing solids, shells, or beams, but not available in mixed meshes. It will display the angular rotation relative to an axis. This allows for clear and precise way of understanding the deformation present in a study. Next up, the shell definition process has been improved. When defining shell element definition, the default back then was the thin option, and there was no setting to change the default to. Now in 2026, you have the option to globally decide whether the thick or thin shells will be defined by default in new studies. So this allows for faster study creation when working with thick shells regularly. Next up on our list of what's new is the ability to view pin connector forces in a random vibration study. Back then you were limited to not being able to view pin connector forces for a random vibration study. SOLIDWORKS 2026 shakes things up a bit with the pin connector. It is now possible to view connector forces from a pin connector being used in a random vibration study. So this will also allow you to view a response graph showing resultant forces across the entire range of vibrations. Force loads when using beam elements has also been improved. Beam meshes are a great way to simplify complicated structures. They allow a tremendous amount of savings in processing time. In the past, there were limitations of only being able to apply a force as a per unit item load. Now, in 2026, the ability to apply total force is spread across multiple beams is available. When setting up the load value to be per unit length, the load type will automatically switch back to per item if it was set to total. So this allows for easier definition of loads spread across multiple beams, saving time and removing the possible source of error. Next on our list is the ability to use remote mass options for response spectrum analysis. Response spectrum analysis are a great way to analyze the seismic response of a structure. 
They had been limited in the type of loads available, and it was not possible to include remote masses. As of 2026, that has changed, and remote masses can now be included in the response spectrum analysis. This can dramatically increase the performance by allowing complex bodies to be simplified and treated as masses rather than requiring the geometry to be part of the study. Next up is the ability to filter out negative buckling load factors for buckling analysis. Previously, when doing buckling analysis, you did not have an option to ignore or filter out negative buckling load factor values. In 2026, the results become even more clear with the ability to filter out negative buckling load factors to only show real risks of failure. Lastly, there is a great performance improvement with connectors in distributed coupling applications. Connectors using a distributed coupling are a great way to accurately and efficiently model bolts, rods, and bearing connectors. Their performance has been improved in 2026, giving up to a 28% reduction in solve time from 2025, allowing you to more easily connect with your simulations, or at least be comfortable putting more connectors in them. Beyond improvements to performance, connectors have been made to be more robust, allowing more facets in the faces connected by connectors. In 2025, there was a limit of 800 facets permitted in a coupling. In 2026, this limit has been removed. So this allows for larger and more complex problems, including fasteners, to be analyzed.